10 days. It took me just 10 days after finishing my first playthrough of the original Final Fantasy VII ever to burn through Final Fantasy VII Remake. As I sat back from my PC that night in May after seeing the credits roll, hundreds of doors of opportunity opened themselves to me. Would I finally finish Persona 4 Golden? Would I finally get around to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink after shelving it since its release? Or would I try something else? Some secret third option that we didn't explore? I played Final Fantasy VII Remake. I thought for sure I would want a break from the planet and Cloud and the gang after sinking nearly 40 hours into the PlayStation version of 7. And it was a good playthrough, but surely I would want to take a little breather from Final Fantasy and dive into something else, right? I mean, I have a stack of PS5 games waiting for me to jump into them, not to mention most of the Yakuza series that I just repurchased on Steam so that I can catch up using my Steam Deck and finally break my seal on the copy of Infinite Wealth that I bought. But no, I couldn't get the Final Fantasy VII sci-fi fantasy world and emotional storytelling out of my brain, so I immediately sat down and started Final Fantasy VII Remake. I needed to see what changed outside the gorgeous coat of modern paint the game underwent. I wanted to experience the story through a modern lens where the team may have taken time to iron out anything they wanted to lightly retcon or fix, and most of all, I wanted to swing around the Buster Sword in action combat as Cloud. This game just really got its hooks into me, and the universe has really pulled me in. So much so that I bought Rebirth 10 hours into Remake because I told my wife, yeah, I already know I'm going to play this next, so uh, might as well. Welcome back to the channel, Plooper Troops, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to Break the Backlog, the show where I sit down and provide my thoughts, opinions, and personal stories about a particular game that I've been playing. Today we're talking about the aforementioned Final Fantasy VII Remake. After a little over a week post-OG Final Fantasy VII, I have now no-lifed and finished Remake, and I wanted to follow up my last review with the natural progression into the highly anticipated remake of arguably the biggest Final Fantasy game of all time. Cloud and the team have a fresh coat of paint, some story tweaks and additions, and some drastic gameplay changes. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and grab a snack as we break the backlog on Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake is an action, RPG, and complete from-the-ground recreation of the legendary 1997 JRPG of the same name. Remake was released on the PlayStation 4 back in April of 2020, PlayStation 5 a year later on June 10, 2021, and PC that same year on December 16, 2021. The game features many changes to its gameplay, visuals, and sound, with an aim to still pay homage to the game that has been credited with paving a path forward for Square in the West and bringing Final Fantasy to the hands of a much larger audience. This was handled through bringing on some key staff members who worked on the original game like Tetsuya Nomura and Yoshinori Kitase. This game is also part of a planned trilogy whose goal is not only to retell the story of the original PlayStation hit, but to expand and change some aspects of the story for a more full narrative experience. This first game covers about the first 5-8 to eight hours of the original story, and it stretches it to around the 35 hour mark, at least on my playthrough. This was by way of adding additional story beats, expanding on elements of the story and characters, and adding side quests. Now, let's talk about how that 35 hours went. First up are the visuals for the game, which will obviously be an area of remake that stands starkly different from the PS1 original release. The once low polygon cube hands of the past have been cast aside for a much more modern and realistic design as the technology is now available to make what the developers envisioned back in the planning stages for Final Fantasy VII in the mid 90s a reality. I bet that feeling was amazing. To be able to represent this story in a way that clearly and effectively communicates its ideas with a beautiful presentation such as the art style that Remake is done in. I got the feeling from playing the original game that the people making it really loved and believed what they were doing taking such risks as the initial dive into 3D when their series as a whole was built on 2D experiences, and that same love can be felt in many of the aspects that make up Final Fantasy VII Remake. Here the world of Midgard comes to life in a big way, and all of those locations and characters we got to know in the original game have been given an HD makeover. This was done while still offering a world that feels familiar as a whole. I remember seeing the park that Cloud and Aerith end up in on their adventure to return Cloud to the Sector 7 slums for the first time in Remake, and being stoked that I recognized the most identifiable structure there being the large round cat climbing thing and i just turned to my wife and i was telling her that it's just so crazy to have played the original and then to see that what more than two decades of progress in the video game world and technology does and many of the locations are like this they are beautiful representations of places we visited in the original game done with such an attention to detail and level of care to recreate this world in a way that would only build on the experience of the veterans of the series while also enticing new players to jump into the story that made this game so legendary. I really enjoyed exploring these locations from my very recent memory of the original game and comparing my footage from the last review to this one. 
it is a really cool feeling to be able to see how far gaming has come from a graphical and art standpoint, and I really love the attention to detail that Midgar and its locales included. The flower garden grown by Aerith really does pop against the brown rusts and metallics of the slums, which did a great job of showing just how rare flowers are to people, a symbol of beauty that is all too present in our real life world that we take for granted. The neon signs and claustrophobic alleyways of Wall Market give it the appearance of a hustling, bustling underbelly that it's supposed to be, where many go to find their fix for their vices. This quality and care is also true of the new locations that we haven't seen in such detail before. Remake is one of the first times we get to see what the topside Shinra employees live like, and these cookie cutter suburbs mirror many suburban towns that we're familiar with in our world. There is a clear distinction between the middle and lower classes that we can see here, and without such attention to detail and care in making these thoughtful additions for subtle world building purposes, these additions may have felt tacked on rather than expanding the lore and story. As for the characters, everyone in the main cast has traded in their blocky hands and origami leg creases for more realistic anatomy, whether in cutscene or in live gameplay. Once again, the original designs were upheld and respected, with care being made to only enhance rather than make unidentifiable. This was another high mark of quality as watching the sparks fly and these beautiful characters go into combat once again displays what was the imagination of gamers and developers back then and i think it's really awesome to see that vision play out on screen now in a way that's closer to the fights we may have all imagined playing games like this would look like in our heads there's not too much deviation from the original designs of the characters which i think was the right call to make and from a visual standpoint the whole game is gorgeous since the original cloud and the gang have had distinct color palettes that represent them and are a well thought out blend of colors who complement their personalities and designs. Each character has a distinct look and mannerisms that play out in their body language which do a great job of subtle storytelling at times, and the action sequences are filled with the sparks of steel hitting steel, the flash of bullets ejecting from barrels, and the whimsical explosion of spells and abilities on screen. Now that isn't to say that it's without any flaws. I wanted to mention that I did have a graphical issue when I was trying to play this on the PC version that ultimately made me switch to the PS4 version. And that was this weird issue when the screen turns completely white and only reset, at least for me, when I exited and reloaded the game. This was pretty annoying at times, and ultimately I just moved over to PlayStation where I had no issues after that. However, even after moving over to the PlayStation, another thing that I did notice at times were some inconsistencies in the quality of textures that led to some noticeable parts where a really pretty character model would be opening a less than stellar door, for instance. It isn't so much that it's downright bad, but it does happen from time to time and it can be a bit jarring. Aside from those issues, Remake is a pretty beautiful game from the ground up in many ways, and I thoroughly enjoyed this art style and world design. I still remember looking up at the massive upper portion of Midgar and seeing how the plates really do sit above the slums, and it just puts in perspective how big the city actually is, and how this class structure has affected everyone that lives here. The characters are distinct and identifiable, as their designs have carried with them the concepts and original art done by Tetsuya Nomura. The world is huge and expansive despite being only the beginning city in which the original game takes place, complete with some stunning visuals and a sense of community and it being a lived-in world that we get to explore for ourselves. The graphical overhaul of Remake has done nothing but bring those imaginative ideas from the original concepts and bring them closer to reality with the availability of technology that's capable of creating an experience closer to what was envisioned. Stellar art design, beautiful visuals, and a real sense of improving and building upon the world were established here. And as a whole package, despite some issues, the graphics are very pretty to look at. It's over! That's my line. Sound is a very high point in Remake as well, that follows the same path of maintaining the original game's identity while also bringing it into the modern world. The soundtrack contains compositions from the original game composed by Nobuo Oematsu, whose songs have also been given a new audible makeover while still displaying diligence in preserving the original game's score and sounds. This was yet another thing that my recent experience with the original 7 had enhanced as I continuously was excited when I recognized tracks from my other playthrough. In my review for the original game, I said that I found the game score did a wonderful job in providing sounds for the wide range of emotions to accompany the fluctuating feelings provoked by the story. Because most of the soundtrack is the same compositionally, but better quality sounds, this still applies and maybe even more so. The songs are a beautiful playlist of tracks that accompany the narrative so well, whether it be the harrowing encounters with Sephiroth that have us questioning if Cloud has gone completely nuts, or softer, more intimate moments with characters in which their internal struggles are displayed. As for the rest of the soundscape, it is of the same high quality as the soundtrack, and made some improvements on some of my complaints from the original game. The main sound complaint I had was the eardrum shredding sounds of some of the Bahamut summons or the Comet spell for instance that just felt like peaking screeching audio and became annoying in prolonged fights when you had to use these abilities more than once. 
I never found any of the audio mixing to be an issue in my entire playthrough of Remake, and that includes when explosions are flying, spells are launching, summons are roaring, and weapons are clashing. The sounds of battle offer some sleek and punchy effects that never rise to an uncomfortable or annoying level, and they offer a very solid experience in combat. Characters do have some repeated battle lines at the end of battles or when their health drops to a critical level, for example, but it never felt intrusive or that noticeable. I actually enjoyed hearing the banter between squad members as you switch between them and they take over the main action. Speaking of the characters talking, another big change from the original game is that Remake has voice acting, and it's pretty fantastic. This is pretty important considering that the new cast had no performances to go off of in terms of the original game. I know there's been like movies and stuff and other games that have had examples of how these characters are supposed to sound but i will say for not having that of the original game and the dialogue written there they did a pretty good job there are some moments of awkwardness like when tifa's explaining a job to cloud and he kind of just moans and what i think is supposed to be the sound of displeasure but it kind of just sounds odd huh? these water filters won't replace themselves <laughs> although the next batch probably could if jesse put her mind to it most every home in the area has one Folks love them because they practically eliminate the rotten egg smell. Honestly, they make us more money than this place. And it's easy money, too. We bring Another thing that was massively improved from the original version was the work with translation. In my research on the original 7, the team talked about how there was difficulty with translation and it not being something that they had many resources for, which led to some mistakes and awkward dialogue bits at times. What is apparent here is on a writing level, translation level, and vocal performance level is that the same amount of care that we have seen put into the rest of the game up until the point of this review is once again present here. The characters are all voiced incredibly well and really gave some strong performances that have once again followed the theme of only improving upon the original game's character work. Sound as a whole represents another high mark of quality within this remake. Now, moving on to the area of the game that may be a bit controversial to some, and the point where people may draw different conclusions. Final Fantasy VII Remake is an action RPG, which doesn't sound like a huge deal, but when this game was announced, there were many opinions about using this action battle system and how it would ruin the series moving forward. This is an argument not unique to the Final Fantasy series as well, and instead is represented throughout the JRPG community as a whole. The idea is that turn-based games are not boring and that this approach to combat allows for deeper strategy and character involvement. On the other hand, fans arguing for action combat argue that turn-based combat is boring and leads to burnout for many gamers as it is not as responsive or engaging as action-based combat. Now for me personally, I am going to be a bit of a fence-sitter here. I do enjoy both combat styles and I don't think that action combat always needs to feel dumbed down or repetitive or that turn-based combat always needs to feel like a chore. Both can be done exceptionally well, and these connotations are not mutually exclusive to the respective combat systems they're attached to. That being said, Final Fantasy VII Remake does do action combat exceptionally well, and it manages to add a layer of strategy that harkens back to the original game. This action combat system allows players to take control of the various party members and switch between them on the fly as their different strengths and weaknesses can control the tides of battle. Characters have access to basic attacks, spells, abilities, items, and powerful limit breaks that serve as their ultimate abilities or attacks. The materia system also makes its return from the original game, allowing characters to learn various spells, abilities, and auto skills should the respective materia be slotted into one of the available slots on their weapon or armor. There's also a nod to the active time battle system from the original game through using bars that fill up throughout the fight and allow party members to utilize their abilities, spells, and items. This was a clever addition to the action combat system that in combination with the returning materia system give players the ability to make characters fit into roles that fulfill their needs. There's also a whole host of weapons, armor, and accessories to find and equip to characters throughout the game, which further increase the roles they can be grown into. These additions to the combat system made it more enjoyable than, say, Final Fantasy XVI's in my opinion, whose combat system is similar to this one, but like I said in my review of that game at the time, would have benefited greatly from adding the ability to control other party members. The combat is really fluid and fun to engage in, and it was even difficult during some of the latter boss fights within the game when trying to figure out their gimmicks and effective strategies to overcome them. Now, outside of the combat, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a pretty linear experience, which only allows you to really freely travel Midgar and its various slums and sectors at the end of the game so that you can clean up any quests you might have left undone. This was something that was criticized a bit upon release, however, I didn't really mind it all that much as the portion of the original seven that this game's story covers was fairly linear in its own right. It isn't until the end of this segment of the original game that it really opens up anyways, so I expect that Rebirth will be a great deal more open as it will be delving into post-Midgar portions of Final Fantasy VII. What was a bit tedious is the nature of many of the game's side quests that I believe were added to give more life and a stronger sense of community in these slum areas of Midgar, but instead mostly felt like optional fluff added to the game in many cases. 
Sure, some of the quest lines did offer some funny dialogue or bits about the world, but in many ways they just felt like chores. The side content was not downright bad or anything like that, just really bland. Now I was pleased to see that the idea of the mini games was returning from the original Final Fantasy VII as it was just something unique about that game's DNA and it was something that I was really floored by just how much they could fit into that game considering the time and technology it was made on. Here the various mini games have leaderboards such as the darts mini game and the 7th heaven bar but my favorite has to be returning to the gym and taking on the bros in the battle of squatting and now pull ups. Now these can be incredibly frustrating on the highest difficulty tier of challenge but it felt like a cool inclusion to get to see these meatheads again. The overall gameplay loop of this game does feel a bit worn out by the time the game came to a close despite the fun and strategy of the combat. Every section is basically broken down into explore, fight through enemies and story progression, then the story progression hits a wall, now do a bunch of side activities to unlock more story progression in a way that becomes noticeable towards the latter half of the title. That being said, Remake was extremely fun and it felt like a showcase of the amount of quality and care put into this modern new direction for the titles while also including nods to the past to give you those cool fan moments of noticing something from the original PlayStation title. There was definite moments of brilliance here with the new combat mechanics and the way in which the systems of old were considered within the new game, and there's also inclusions to the gameplay like in the motorcycle levels, boss fights, and puzzles that have the game's original identity baked into them. All things considered, this game was very fun, if not a bit tedious in the way that it progresses. Now this will likely be the shortest part of the review as Typically, I don't even tend to cover the story of the video games that I review too in depth in the hopes that the little that I do talk about will protect someone else's first playthrough or maybe even get someone else to consider trying the game for themselves. This will be even more true of this particular video as I've covered most of this part of the story in my original Final Fantasy VII review, which you can find linked below or in the little time card at the top of the screen. Final Fantasy VII Remake is the first game in a trilogy that aims to recreate the legendary RPG in a more modern way. As such, this game does not cover the entirety of the original story as I mentioned before and instead focuses on expanding the opening hours of its predecessor in the name of providing more character work, more story context, and a more detailed narrative. We take on the role of Cloud Strife, ex-soldier first class who joins up with the eco-terrorist group known as Avalanche to take out an energy harvesting facility known as a reactor. These reactors are owned by mega corporation Shenra who use the Mako energy harvested from the planet to power everyday life in the world. Cloud took this job after his childhood friend Tifa pointed him towards the group who were looking for muscle to help carve a path into the reactor. Joining up with Barrett, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, Cloud eliminates Shinra security troops as the rest of the group sneaks into the reactor with a bomb. This first job goes smoothly at first until Cloud and Barrett are forced to fight a scorpion-like security robot. And while the Avalanche team doesn't know this, Shinra uses this fight to cause a much bigger explosion than was initially planned, causing chaos to erupt in the neighborhoods around the reactor. Cloud and the gang climb through the rubble to return to their home base, seeing and struggling with the destruction they believe they caused. Eventually they make it back to the Sector 7 slums and stop off at their base to begin planning their next job, allowing Cloud to get to know the area and its denizens. And that's about all I'm going to cover because that's pretty much the entire introduction to this game. There were a lot of expansions to the story that aimed to flesh out characters like Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, who in the original release aren't covered a whole lot outside of a few key plot points. In Remake, we get a far more intimate look at these three and really get to see how they interact with Cloud and the others as well as bits and pieces of who they were before we got to jump into their world. It is inclusions like these that really add a massive amount of emotional weight behind the storytelling. There are entire story portions that are just entirely new and they serve this purpose of expansion. I really enjoyed the story of Remake, at least the main story that is. The inclusions of further character and plot development as well as taking care to put Cloud within the mix of the various slums and citizens and how deeply affected the people are of the propaganda of Shinra as well as the destruction that these generators are having on surrounding areas make the story have much more impact. Seeing the destruction come to the areas that you have come to know very well or hearing citizens buying into Shinra's lies that everything bad happening to them is Avalanche's fault gave some very solid direction for the tone and themes of this title. I also found the way in which the antagonist Sephiroth is shown to play his mind games with Cloud make it much easier to understand why Cloud seems so distant and conflicted in the original title. The story was done a lot of justice in this remake, and while there are pretty dull side activities that do feel tacked on at times, the new narrative focuses in combination with the already solid story made for some extremely emotional moments, whether that be through epic face-off, touching dialogue, or the new insights we have into the cast. Final Fantasy VII Remake set out to do what many may have considered the impossible in providing a modern take on the classic PlayStation title that really boosted Square, JRPGs, and the Final Fantasy series into popularity here in the West. 
taking steps to include new experiences through story beats and fleshing out characters who were nothing more than side notes in the original game, as well as finding clever ways to incorporate shouts to the old game, such as the active time battle meter, are really solid additions that made it feel like this game didn't forget its identity. With only some graphical inconsistencies and some pretty dull side content, this remake has far more going for it than it does holding it back, and I can for sure recommend this as a buy, especially considering that I've seen it for as low as 20 US dollars recently. I cannot wait to start Rebirth now that this script is done, so if you don't mind, I'll be on my happy little way. But thank you for watching, and please share your thoughts on the remake in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe, as that always helps out the channel. And until the next one, take care of yourselves, Koopa Troops. Peace. By her loving grace and providence, may we take our place in paradise.